Hey YouTubers, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. So today it's another in-depth operation on the BMW uh, 320i. So we're going to be going in and trying to solve one of the fault codes that's been coming up on the dash. Pretty common one this one. And I'll just take you and show you the diagnostics in a second. Um, but the fix we're hoping for, we've got three parts here. So we've got the eccentric shaft uh, position sensor. We've got a new servo motor for the eccentric shaft. And we've got the oil seal, which is um, around the uh, sensor coupling. So it goes around this sensor coupling. And that was leaking, or has been leaking. And I think that's where the oil got into the old sensor. So those are the three parts we're going to be putting on. To get into that, we're going to be taking off all the air inlet, uh, all of the rocker cover uh, covering up the engine there, tie that up out of the way, and then take off the camshaft cover and get into the engine, get those parts changed. We'll see how we go doing that. And just showing you the fault. So this is the uh, diagnostics. So I'm getting a, a 2851 code, which is actuation server motor faulty. If I go back out of that one, that might be the only one showing currently, but I will put up a couple of sh screen grabs just showing what other codes are on there previously on the engine ECU and also the dashboard light. Okay, so uh, we'll get into it and get some of this apart. Should be pretty straightforward. So just taking off the air inlet using these little torques. And then after that, it's mostly 10 millimeter, just pulling out all that wire harness. You might have seen another video I've done uh, where I did the uh, bore scope inspection of the cylinders. Okay, let's get on with it. We'll see if we can get it done in around, uh, I'm going to say around an hour of work and a little bit of videoing. Okay, so we made some progress. So air inlet off, then lots of little eight millimeter bolts. So these ones here on the air inlets, uh, the same on the cover. So the air filter cover, which is down there, or the in cabin filter taken off this um, rail and uh, when I put that back on I'll just show you it's very important to get that clipped on correctly onto this rubber seal so that, that keeps all the water out of the engine and we're just going to take off this bar now which is this E um, I think 12 on this end and the same in the center and then we can then get off this inlet cover and uh, make some progress that in a second okay the other thing we do tend to do is take off these uh, power cables so that's these two screws here so that we can lift that power wire out the bit out of the way those coil wires a little bit more out of the way okay so we've got the um, got all the cables out the way I just took these two off which always gives you a lot more room here got the bungee cords on holding all the cables out of the way and now uh, you can see the motor so this is the servo motor for the eccentric shaft so next we're going to be taking out the spark plug coil caps or sorry the whole coils uh, and this is the fix we did last time so you can just hear there's just a little bit of weeping of oil just a tiny tiny amount of oil there leaking out so it seems that it's sort of worked as a fix but we have got the new seal to fix that up so we'll whip those bolts out, we'll take off these sensor bolts to make a bit more room, take off these earth bolts so that we can get this cable harness out of the way, take off the connector off the motor, and take out the spark plugs and take those off the coils so they come out by lifting these caps like that. So we'll get those all out, so that pulls those connectors down like that. Okay, we'll get all those out, get the coils out, and uh, then I think we're well on the way. Okay, so we've pulled the wire harness up out of the way over the top this time. A couple of other tricks we found. Uh, always worth taking off, especially if yours has already been taken off the vacuum hose, off the vacuum pump there at the back. And then if you unclip it from here, you can actually get it completely out of the way, which makes a huge heap more room all down here. So we've got those earths off, got the motor ready to go, um, and just pulling the spark plugs. So the way I like to do this is just put a wire underneath that connector. I don't know if I can do this one-handed. And then if you just pull on that wire, you drop your coil down the engine. Uh, that didn't work out very well. Just grab that in a second when I can find it. Um, so yeah, don't do that one-handed would be my advice. And get those coil packs out. Then we're going to take the seal off. And then we've got all these bolts ready to go. So should just be able to lift the 
cam cover off. Okay, so we're kind of at the midpoint now. So we got the sensor off, really tricky. Three little bolts, one of them, you have to put the socket straight through the um, guide there on the cam chain. Uh, then also got the motor off, the seal was leaking a little bit. So got a new seal with the new motor. But I do want to get a little bit of silicon on there just to try and make sure that stays stays up tight. And uh, other than that, then get those two back on and start getting it back together. We'll see how we go. Just looking at the sensors. They're over here, so here's the new copy sensor. And just there's the original one. And the oil. Not sure if you can see that, is all up there inside the connector itself. So it's either coming up the outside of this shaft or up the inside. So that's the new sensor. So we don't have a new seal for the connector that's on the engine. That's this one here. But it hasn't looked to have been leaking up that shaft. Anyway, we'll put a bit of uh, lubricant or sealant on all of those and try and stop them leaking and see how we go. Okay, so um, we just had a quick pit stop to pick up some um, silicon RTV. Uh, this is the Loctite version. There is a Permafax version available, the Ultra Black. And I'm going to be putting that around the seal here on the motor shaft. You can see here there's been a little bit of weeping um, where that's leaked down before. And then I'm also going to use it on the um, half moons around the four corners of the half moons at the front. And at the back there, the two rear corners and the two front corners. Just those typical leak points. And hopefully then, uh, I'm just going to reuse the old gasket today. I'll also put a little bit around the top of this gasket. And as mentioned, around the sensor. And hopefully then, that keeps the leaks at bay. It was, um, I did do it before, just with some domestic silicon. Uh, just as a sort of a stopgap, that did work out pretty well. So I was pretty happy that that sort of held up. And if I can just get this harness, and we'll try and get this harness a bit more out of the way. Just around the front there. It's pulling a little bit. It's just got the, um, I think the compressor wire down the bottom there. But we should be able to get that back together. Not doing the timing chain today. That's a job for another day. Okay, let's, um, let's get this motor sil siliconed up and back in. Just a quick reference, there's the old motor. Looks original BMW, new motor, just a generic, and a bit different in the quality of the gear, but looks pretty similar. We'll see how we go with that, and as mentioned, the uh, switch being a clone as well. Sorry, the sensor being a clone as well. Okay, let's get this back together and see what it looks like. Okay, so motor's in and talked up, sensor's in and talked up. And now, uh, that's probably clean enough. Just got the silicon on the corners, a bit messy. I'm going to buy a new seal next time I take this off. And done that on all eight of the half moon corners. And we're just going to see if that goes on okay. So let's get it together and see how we go. Okay, so I've got the cover on and I must say, a lot easier this time with the harness on the high side. But one thing you do want to do, I'm not sure if you can see it in that, in that mirror down there I've put there, is you just need to check that that half moon is seated in correctly. So, don't know if you can see that in the, the view there. And the same on this side here, just above the pump. Just get yourself a mirror. Sorry for the angle. Get yourself a mirror and um, just make sure that you're happy that seal's sitting down correctly. There, you should be able to see that there. That seal's sitting just nice there. <clears throat> and the same at the front. Just making sure the seal's nicely in the groove around here and around here. Really high likelihood of leakage here. I think it's just been weeping a little bit. That is the, one of the most common leaks that I've seen. And the other one is being, and we'll come to that in a moment, off this sensor seal. So really three points, around the motor, around the sensor, and around the half moons. Okay, let's get that. These are all just loose at the moment, so I'm just gonna nip these down, 
and then leave them half an hour or so and then chalk them up. Okay, so back together, just going to check over the last of the bolts. So I've got the power cables back on, got the earths back on, got all the spark plugs back in, got this wire harness clipped into there. Just going to take it outside and give it a wash after, but um, have screwed down all of these tight. Uh, some people recommend you leave them a bit loose for half an hour or so. I can't see that that silicon's going to make any difference. It's either in there or it's not. So I think we can give it a little um, test. I might do some diagnostics on that motor. See if I can. Okay, so hopefully um, it's going to fire up okay and we'll see how we go. Okay, so just before we do a start, we're just going to check for codes and see if we can see anything stored in there. Use my butter fingers. So this is my Vident um, Diagnostics, just running on the BMW mode here, not the OBD. What we should see once it's finished reading is the um, old stored code for the motor failure. It does take a little while. Okay, so I might just pause that until that's done. Okay, so that's lots of thinking into diagnosis. You can scan for the um, different modules. So this just runs through the engine electrics, transmission electrics, stability control, ABS, car access, footwell module, JBE, junction box. A few for different faults here, not surprising. We'll just nip into these and clear them out. If you saw my other videos, there was um, quite a problem on the PDC. We'll just have a look in the JBE. Driver's footwell. Reading codes. This is the light faults that we've got, so we've got to fix those separately. And finally, the engine, read codes, valvetronic actuation, erase codes. Okay, and there we should have no faults. Okay, we'll uh, give it a start and see what happens. Okay, so let's see how we go. It's ignition on. You can hear the throttle body and the servo checking itself. That warning is from the headlights. little wash over and now I'll just give it a start and dry off tomorrow. Get that air cleaner back cover back on and we're all good. Alright, thank you for watching this one and uh, hope to see you on the next video and I might give you a follow up on how that's working out with that uh, valve tronic motor. Okay, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.